Washington football. Woo! Everybody and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host Kyle, and I am joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed. We are joined by very special guests, returning guests, but with video this time. Sam Fortier of the Washington Post, beat writer for the Washington Football Team. Sam, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I I, I got the memo that this is what you do to I guess come in <laughs> with, with video. So <laughs> thank you guys for having me back. When in Rome, when in Rome, Sam. Real fast, I just want to say to everybody watching, I'm usually I look like Nosferatu or something right now with how pale I look. I'm I'm <laughs> usually not this unhealthy and sickly looking. So don't let him lie to you, Sam. I'm um, not dead. But to, speaking of sickly, I'm I'm sorry to say that, but the NFL announced today that a new COVID policy uh, in regards to their unvaccinated players testing positive, possibly forfeiting matches this season. Sam, if you can, in layman's terms, kind of explain for us fans what this new policy is for the NFL and should Washington fans be worried? Yeah, so I guess to to break it down, uh, the NFL is saying that if you cannot play a game on time because you have an outbreak among your unvaccinated players, then game over, you forfeit, too bad, sorry, see you later. Uh, They basically were like, we are playing our 18 week season in 18 weeks. We are not adding a 19th week, which, you know, last year was 17 weeks. They talked about, okay, if we need that cushion, that makeup week, we can do it. They ended up obviously Washington, you know, played Pittsburgh after they had played on Wednesday night. Uh, so, so they were really anti uh, doing that, you know, making extra weeks last year, but this year they're saying we're not even entertaining that get vaccinated. So mm-hmm. basically what this is, uh, if, if you know, if you read between the lines, is the NFL saying, yeah, we're smart, we have lawyers, we're not gonna, you know, get in a lawsuit situation by mandating the vaccine, but we are gonna put the onus on the teams so that they make you get the vaccine, basically, because uh, Neil Stratton of Inside the League, which is a great resource, he he had a report today that that several scouts had told him position players or position coaches, excuse me, around the league are calling their players and being like, I mean, if you're a, a bubble roster guy you better get the vaccine or you're going to be on the chopping block. That's, is basically, exactly, I think the message. that's exactly what Scott Hartley said uh, for one of his questions. Kyle was, if, if you're a roster player, do you think that now you have to get the vaccine? It's like, yeah. I mean, if it's between you and somebody who's vaccinated, you're going to get the, you're going to be on the block if not. Um, so uh, speaking of the national media and kind of national headlines, it seems like the national media right now has kind of fallen in love with Washington. I, I've seen a lot of people out there finally hopping on this Washington train. Uh, Rich Eisen said that he expects Washington to have 12 wins. Uh, what uh, what do you think about this? Is this weird for you? Uh, I, I, Rich Eisen is, is an optimistic guy. I, I think that's, right. uh, that, that's good. I mean, that's good for him to, to hear. I think uh, – the national media, it's, it's probably, you know, a combination of Ron Rivera, the story of this team last year, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, all of these things I feel like are, are pretty good storylines. Uh, and, and also, like, obviously, they do have a, a very legitimate defense, uh, you know, I think a, a top five, top three sort of defense capable of. Um, but I think, I, you know, I might be a little less bullish uh, because I think the offense is, is still has some questions. But uh, in terms of getting some national attention, I mean, hey, uh, anytime a team I cover is is good, uh, which happened with the Washington Nationals in, in 2019, I, I'll take oh, it. I, I love yeah. it. Oh, you're a good luck charm. That's what I'm. J- what I just heard. Yeah. <laughs> I covered. Uh, I covered the Chargers in 2018 when uh, they went to the divisional round. So I, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna keep that postseason streak alive. Yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah, please definitely, do. Definitely. I'm gonna need you yeah. to come with me to go get a lottery ticket, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, and um, you mentioned the offense, and you think they're going to – you still have a little bit of questions about them. It seems like uh, the half the fan base is kind of pro Ryan Fitzpatrick, thinking he's going to have a big year. The other half is kind of, oh, he'll just be the same old Fitz magic. to give you a couple games here and there. He'll lose you a couple games. Did we just lose Mike? Yeah. I think we did. It's fine. So we'll come back to his question. Sam, yesterday the Washington football team blew everyone's doors off by surprising them with this – football uh friday night football that they're going to be happening on august 6th at fedex field 
twenty thousand <laughs> fans are going to be allowed in the stadium to watch practice happen live. Right Plus, we're going to be able to have the pyrotechnics. We're going to have the dance and entertainment team. What did you think about that move? It honestly reminded me of of being in college. Like I went to I went to Syracuse, and they had like their midnight madness sort of deal i know like kentucky's got super big when drake yeah. went that one year mm, like correct. to me this is a very like uh okay so so let's back up for a second so when you think about all of the different things they've done on the business side hiring all sorts of different people who uh you know came from you know european soccer or different sports or different venues like this to me is is sort of that trickle down effect of when you put different minds in that room of right okay mm-hmm. you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna try to make fans excited with you know, you could have just opened the stadium practice, you know, uh, on, on the middle of the day on Friday or whatever and have people take work off. But this is, I think, eventizing it, if that's a word, uh, more so. <laughs> it is <than> now. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is like a, a college-esque feel, which when you have a passionate fan base, I think that's not a bad place to start. Yeah. All right, let's try this again. So <laughs> I think uh, I was saying half the fan base is kind of pro Fitzpatrick. The other half is kind of on the side of he'll just kind of be the same old Fitzpatrick, win you a couple games, lose you a couple games. How do you kind of view him going into the season with you kind of saying that you still have questions about the offense? Yeah, I think for me, you know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is. And, and to me, Ryan Fitzpatrick's function as the quarterback of this team is really just to get this offense uh, on, you know, to keep it on the assembly line that it needs to get to in terms of development. So basically, you know, uh, Deami Brown, get used to press coverage in the NFL, you know, you get used to getting downfield because when we get our quarterback of the future here, you need to know how to do that. Hey, Sam Cosme, you know, all, all of these young guys, all of these parts around the offense, like basically get up to speed because we're going to need you uh, to just be able to plug and play this quarterback. So uh, I think, you know, the merits of him can be debated. I know last year he had like an insane year under pressure, like, he was the best court. If you look at the numbers, like he was the best yeah. quarterback in the league under pressure by yeah. like 10 times yeah. or, or something crazy. We, like we talked to, so we talked I, to him. I don't know if, if you can expect on a NX, NFL next gen stats has him ranked one. We had Sam, or who do we have on a, about from PFF Austin? Gail. Um, yeah. Yeah. Austin Gale. And then he was, he, they had Fitzpatrick rated like three or four or something. And I was like, how does that happen? What is going on between you two? And then we started a big, <laughs> the whole war between them but anyway go ahead that's no, but yeah so so like i don't know if if uh <laughs> to me as long as he's like as long as the floor is high because he's a veteran quarterback and he can get those guys on that timetable that's all you need him to do so right. you know what his ceiling is whatever in, in in my opinion as long as uh as long as he gets you where you need to go that's that should be good enough Right. Yeah. He's going to be play such a huge role with these young guys. And one of the young guys, I mean, you mentioned Sam Cosme, you wrote an excellent article on Sam Cosme and especially his work ethic. If you guys have not read that, please make sure that you do so as soon as possible. It is very good. It'll make you fall in love with Samuel Cosme. Um, Not maybe not, you know, romantically, but you will as a player. Um, (laughs) What can we expect from Sam Cosme going forward? Do you think that he's going to have a start right away this season and he can only ascend or, or what do you see happening with him? Yeah. So, so great question. I think, and also thank you. Um, First, I think like the thing to me that stands out about Sam Cosme is like the same thing that his parents and his coaches and people in his life, his agent will tell you about him. Hey, he's super focused on detail. He's a super attention to detail guy is the same thing that's going to dictate his ceiling this season. Because when you ask people about Sam Cosme or when you look at his numbers, like, the dude is a freak athlete. Yes. Like if, if you want to talk bench, free cone, 40 yard, any of those, you know, tests of athletic performance, he was in the 94th or higher percentile of, right. of those performances, the combine, but he, you know, at Texas, he played and I think a simpler system, more wall off blocking. He wasn't playing zone scheme. He wasn't, you know, creating angles off the line of scrimmage a ton. So it's how quickly can he pick up, you know, John Matsko, the offensive line coach's system. John Matsko really likes that two-hand punch from his offensive lineman. So to me, it's how quickly can he get to that point? Um, and so the attention to detail thing, uh, which his his that one example that um, I think people will appreciate, his agent told me is his agent was driving him around Southern California, and Sam like leaned over and saw that his fuel gauge said like fewer than 30 miles until empty, and Sam was like, "Oh, you should never let your gas tank get below." 
a quarter of a tank. That's it's such a dad <laughs> tip. That's yeah. such a father tip by him. <laughs> his his dad, Cornell Cosme, uh, who is a, is a great storyteller, um, taught him that he's an auto mechanic. Uh, right. He became an auto mechanic okay. after they after like a harrowing journey immigrating from Romania to the U.S., um, which is I think in the story. But yeah. um, it's uh, basically he was like, you should never get below a quarter of a tank, and he explained like the fuel pump. Uh, the fuel keeps it cold. You can read if you're if you're interested in that stuff. You can read more in the story. But um, I think the attention to detail is, is super key for him. And I'm I'm really I'm like just really curious to see like that battle between him and Cornelius Lucas at right tackle in camp. Right. That's one of the most intriguing storylines yeah. to me. It, it is, and especially for me in particular because it, it brings up the question right because Ron Rivera had Cornelius Lucas here playing left tackle. He brought in Charles Leno, and then he drafts Sam Cosme. So. You're thinking in your head, okay, is he going to give it to the veteran leadership or is he going to give it to the player that is playing the best and is going to be the best player on the field? And this brings up to my question, Sadiq Charles, are we kind of forgetting about Sadiq and the left guard spot? Are we 100% sure that Wes Schweitzer is going to have it week one? Uh, both good questions. I think forgetting about Sadiq Charles, uh, perhaps because of just the way that his season was kind of derailed, he played two snaps last year, didn't play most of training camp because of a calf issue. Um, it, it's, uh, I think he could slot in at that left guard spot. I don't think Wes Schweitzer has it locked down. I think Eric Flowers is another guy who could compete for that role. So I think the three of them will probably duke it out um, with, with Sadiq being probably the top option if you have to go to a, a swing tackle. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... Uh, with, with Sadiq Charles, I think he's always had the talent. Even at LSU, he fell in the draft uh, because he tested positive for, for marijuana and was suspended, I think, two or three times at LSU, twice, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. And so the, there was, you know, the character concern, accountability right. sort of deal. But I think Sadiq Charles is, is supremely talented, and, and that's obviously been, you know, that, that's not a question. So what he ends up becoming, I know, you know, I talked to a lot of people last year who were super excited about him. Uh, Ron was was effusive in praise even about his two snaps against the Giants. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you know to both those questions, open question at left tackle or, or left left guard, uh, Sadiq Charles could definitely be that answer. Real fast, Hall. I know you're going to go. I just want to say, isn't it amazing what one season can do to a player? Think about what people were saying about Sadiq Charles last year at this time. Be like, oh, we got to steal. This guy's going to be our left tackle of the future. Now people are forgetting about him and they're not even thinking about him at left guard. It's just it's yeah. crazy what one season can do. I think I think. A really good example of that is Antonio Gandy Golden as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 Valid point. Yeah. I've actually kind of forgot about him. A lot of people are to, uh, banking on Kelvin Harmon just coming back and they're right. kind of just throwing AGG to the side. So that's a good point. Um, another guy that's going to be, I think, pivotal in this offense this year and really kind of make or break the offense is Antonio Gibson. I know a lot of people are high on him fantasy wise, uh, nationally, like in, I guess, in real life wise. So uh, what do you expect from him in year two of the offense and do you see him kind of being that that versatile piece that everyone expected him to be coming in that, uh, to the offense? Definitely. I think you should expect to see him be more versatile this year because really it was only in pressure situations or situations where Scott Turner really needed to get a first down that they would split him out wide and use him as the receiver that he really was at Memphis. So if last year was, hey, Antonio, you know, learn – learn how to run these gaps, learn when to press this hole, you know, don't try to always cut it back and, and get more yards. Like sometimes you just got to get that two or three yard gain to keep us on schedule, learn the nuances of the running back position. I think this year is much more about, Hey, you know, let's, let's try to, let's try to pull this thing open and, and see what we can really achieve, uh, especially with a quarterback who will throw the ball downfield. So Antonio Gibson to me is a guy that you should expect to see in a bunch of different roles uh, this year, certainly. Yeah, they're, they're really going to have to get creative with him. And, uh, I mean, my new best friend and future best man in my wedding, Logan Paulson, says that he thinks that he has the ability to be a top five back in the NFL, and he's dead serious about it. I mean, he's very high on him. But another player, uh, speaking of players that have been forgotten, uh, <laughs> you wrote another good piece on Khalid Hudson. People are forgetting about Khalid Hudson. Khalid Hudson is very, very talented, and Khalid Hudson is still learning the position. Do you see him playing playing a key role in the defense this year? Yeah, so I think that conversation about Klee Hudson starts with Cam Curl last year. And, and and Cam Curl, them using him in, in what they call Buffalo Nickel, which is just right. like basically a big slot corner. So mm -hmm. teams can't run on them as easily as when Jimmy Moreland might be in the game because Jimmy's a little slighter. 
Um, but yeah, so so what Cam Curl was able to do there last year, and obviously he's a different player, but I think really highlighted what a good Buffalo nickel can do. You know, they can they can guard uh, guys in the slot, they can blitz, they can uh, drop back into coverage, they can you know do a bunch of different things. And when you think about Khalid Hudson, that fifth round pick out of Michigan in 2020, he played in a very similar role, mm -hmm. uh, which Michigan under Don Brown called Viper, which he basically played strong safety. Uh, outside linebacker and slot corner, which probably sounds pretty That's familiar right. if you watched Cam Curl right. last year. <laughs> uh, so I think that is a huge question for, for Khalid Hudson is, hey, can you uh, not replicate that production, but can you step into that spot and kind of be that guy? And that was the sort of thing where uh, we were at a charity event with Ron and, and we asked him, you know, hey, who could step in at that Buffalo nickel spot? Immediately brought up Khalid. And he said, you know, we have talked to Landon about it as well. I think Landon's role on his health is, is a completely different question. But if you if you see Khalid Hudson uh, in there at, at Big Nickel this year, at Buffalo Nickel, I think uh, that's going to be a spot where he could excel. Hmm. And that would make a lot of sense. And Sam, we're about one less than a week away from training camp. So a two-part question for you. What is the biggest battle uh, at training camp that you're looking forward to besides quarterback? And then the second part off that question, what is an undercover battle that you are looking forward to that not many people are talking about? Right. Well, I, I don't – I think the quarterback battle is, is in backup only. I know Ron says he's yeah. going to have people compete, but I, Ryan Fitzpatrick is the starter. And, I, I, and I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go to bat on that. Uh, the number one battle – I would have to say is among the receivers. I think there are legitimately yeah. nine guys that can make right. Plays, and you're probably going to keep Crazy. six. Last year they kept five. Right. Um, it just, I think that last receiver spot is go for it. Can, can I ask you a, another jump off question from that? I'm yeah. sorry. I know I already gave you two, but with the practice squad eligibility being expanded based on COVID and everything, do you think that's going to have a lot to do with who's going to make the 53 and who's going to be on the practice squad? Yeah, so this is a great question. I was actually debating with uh, my beat partner, Nikki Javala, today. Mm -hmm. Because when you're trying to, like, figure out these numbers, so so we were having this conversation in the context of who's that third running back, right, Eric right. Patterson or Peyton Barber. And I was like, you know, they, you know, I don't know if it's lip service or not, but every coach brings up Peyton Barber when they talk about those tough yards on third and short. And right. she was like, yeah, but you, for, like, you are forgetting in this conversation – they can put Peyton Barber on practice squad like they did with Lamar Miller last year. Yeah. And I was like, that's a, that's a really good point. So the 53 and, and, and I mean, this is, this is like a whole separate conversation, but you, then you start playing the game of, okay, if they cut Samus Reyes, would they lose him or, or right. do they have to keep yeah, him? Right. And then, you know, like how do you maneuver these yeah. roster moves? So you, so you keep the guys you want. See now, you now you're getting where I'm going. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's like, so, I mean, do you think before, Pax before Milne, you get there, like, <laughs> <up> like <laughs> yeah. you we're, think we're a month we're a month away from these decisions, right? Uh, but but yeah, I I think it's like yes, I do think the practice squad expanding, staying expanded, uh, and you can even talk about that extra offensive lineman rule where you get fifty five right. on a game week. Like, there's a lot that's gonna go or fifty five on a game day. That's gonna there's a lot that's gonna go into that. Um, that I just don't think we we have enough information to to know yet. Right. Right, right. And um, coming into last year when they hired Ron Rivera, he assembled his coaching staff, Jack Del Rio, Scott Turner. Everyone was blown away, home run with uh, Del Rio. People kind of had their questions with Scott Turner. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of contributed the quarterback play last year to the offense and kind of gave him a pass. So going into this year, a guy with like Ryan Fitzpatrick and the weapons that they assembled in the offseason, do you kind of think this is a make or break year for Scott Turner in this offense? I don't know about make or break because I don't think you have the quarterback position – uh solid but yeah i i think it is a huge year for him because last year when you look at the turnover at quarterback the you know the barren covered at wide receiver for a lot of that year like there were plenty of reasons that scott turner's offense couldn't be scott turner's offense right and now i i don't think there's any excuses particularly with the depth that they have with the speed when you think about this eric coriel based offense you know it was pretty good horizontally last year hey you know we're gonna get the space that we need but when you talk about attacking downfield, I mean, when you put Deami Brown uh, out there, when you put Curtis Samuel, you know, when you add all these weapons, you got to be able to understand how to use them. And I think actually Curtis Samuel is, is a really interesting point because 
I know that Scott and, and Drew Terrell, the receivers coach, will say, oh, Curtis Samuel can, can line up everywhere. That's, you know, that's his whole deal. But a big question to me is, is Curtis Samuel primarily outside where Scott's dad, Norv, had him in Carolina in 18 and right. 19? Or is he inside where Joe Brady put him last year or and he, he had a career cool here? Right. So, and, he, and he had it. Yeah, he, he was great. So the, that, that's a big question. That's one of like the initial litmus tests for mm -hmm. me. Where does Scott Turner use Curtis Samuel? Because if he uses him outside, then you're talking about maybe Adam Humphreys is that receiver three. Right, if right, he uses right. him inside, maybe it's Cam Sims or Deami Brown. So I think there's a lot of, you know, I'm probably making too much of where does he play Curtis Samuel, but it is, it is, a, it is a big question to me. And I think when you talk about how does he approach certain situations with this offense, um, that's just one of the big things that I'm looking at. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's super important. And one of the people that you mentioned, Deami Brown, um, a, he was a third round pick. Another third round pick that's been making splashes has been Benjamin St. Juice. People have been very excited about him all throughout minicamp. He, he's made some fantastic plays. Who do you think has a bigger impact in year one between Benjamin St. Juice and Deami Brown? Oh, man, that is that's a good that's one. Both uh, positions are deep. Both, both positions are deep. I think St. Juice has has some length on the outside that might get him on the field. He offers something earlier. nobody else has, right? Right, and and my concern, if if you put Curtis Samuel inside, is Samuel McLaurin and Deami Brown are basically the same frame, like roughly six right. foot, one ninety five. So I don't know if he's if he would see as many snaps. Obviously, he's an impact player, but uh, I think there's a better chance St. Juice gets on the field. But I will say, uh, the last practice of mandatory minicamp, I don't know what it is, and I don't know how you know, I don't know how people will be able to pick up on it. But I remember, uh, I think it was Steven Sims had a move against St. Juice that Terry McLaurin came off and, and he, he broke it back outside for a touchdown. It might not have been Steven Sims, but regardless, a receiver, say, Steven Sims caught it. What? <laughs> a receiver made a move on, uh, on St. Juice and ended up scoring, like broke it outside. And Terry McLaurin ran all the way down the field screaming find the weakness and wear it out find the weakness mm -hmm. and wear it out oh so, i mean evidently uh you know i'm sure that's true for any young player oh yeah but when terry mclaurin who's not a loud guy is stepping up kind of going at you like that right it just put in the back of my mind like what did he see and is, is are other yeah. people going to see that mm. right that is a Damn. great point i did not know that yeah that is that's... fantastic now to wrap this up sam i have a question for you your former boss of the Washington Post just was sent into space yesterday, um, and that <laughs> looked to be big news, obviously. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, did you did you see it? And then um, if you were to go to space, Washington football team style, who are you taking with you? Oh, man. Um, I, I did see it. I did see it. Uh when when the when the owner of your company goes to space, you, you gotta you gotta check in for sure. <laughs> that rocket was a penis, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to get fired, so I'm just gonna say uh, that was yeah, that was a Doctor Evil uh, bit, dude. Right? Yeah, that's exactly I what mean, that was. Hey, man, I, I respect your reporting and and you're writing down what you see, and and I I respect that. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go Washington football team style. I think. I think that, I mean, this is kind of cliche, but I think I got to take Chase Young because he is, as you saw with the Heineke right. bit, like, I don't know if there's a better hype man on that team. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. True. you're absolutely right about that. Point. I think, I, I think, uh, I think a, a sneaky one though, might be Brandon Sheriff because he's okay. so dry. I would like. Would he be impressed by going to space? I, I would need to know. <laughs> Another good one might be Jimmy Moreland because Jimmy's so funny oh, that yeah. like you yes. you could just sit there and just I'm sure Jimmy would have some crazy funny right. jokes about the world. Absolutely, yes. Sam. I can't thank you enough for joining us. I apologize yes. for Reed's joke, um, but I did want to ask. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a favor. Can you please? I'm gonna get you some aviators. Can you grow out the beard? And I'm telling you, look, you're gonna look just like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Can we make that happen? <laughs> yes. Hey man, this is, I, I'm trying to show up. I, I know I'm never gonna compete with him, but I'm I'm trying to do my best to, to show up and uh, see what see what happens. The next also, time, the <laughs> next the time you interview down. him, the next time you interim, interview him, get some aviators on. You know, cause they see you in the Zoom, right? They can see you when you ask some questions. Yeah, so yeah, do, yeah. Please. Do oh, it. he'll lose his mind. <laughs> it's sure. gonna, we're gonna we're getting in person interviews at camp. 
So, oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to show up with some chest hair out. Dude, yes. Yeah. I was, oh. If you do that, I guarantee he loses his mind. That'll go viral. <laughs> That'll definitely That'll be a great interview. Hey, I can't thank you enough for joining us, Sam. I know we went a little bit over. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, sir. I wish you the best. Thank you for all your articles recently. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, WashingtonPost.com, yes. Sam Fortier. Where can they find you on Twitter, sir? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Sam, the number four TR, at SAM, the number four TR. And and do I have uh, time to give one shout out before yeah, I go? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. I got a shout out real quick. Charlie Muley. He's, uh, he's in the public relations department with the Washington football team. He just dropped the media guide uh, about an hour ago. And, and that man spends a lot of his time making sure that media guide comes together. So I know uh, people, I, I certainly appreciate his hard work and I feel like people should should certainly be aware of it. I've texted Charlie. Yeah. I just need him to respond. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't thank you enough, Sam. I hope you have a great night, sir. And we're going to get you on again soon, probably right after the season starts for some really good, uh, some really good bits. Yeah. Sir. Oh yeah. Cool. Thanks so much guys. I appreciate it. All right, Sam, I mean, you have a good I, night, yeah. sir. I appreciate it. Have a good one, man. Yep. All right, everybody. We just spoke with Sam Fortier of the Washington post that bit about Sam Cosme. That was mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, uh, yeah. that article is so interesting. Like I said, he's such a good writer. If you have not read that yet, please go do it. It's really going to make you. I was very nervous with the Sam Cosby pick at first just because of like his fundamentals. And, and but he really makes you feel comfortable with it because of his attention to detail, because of how he was raised from his from his parents. That like and now there's like almost no doubt in my mind that Sam Cosby is going to succeed because yeah. of that article. So absolutely. Yeah, um, but before we get into like fan questions and the freestyle, our guy Brandon Reinbold's <laughs> got ours for today so he's going to be we're going to have his freestyle up here in a second for everybody with a question i supplied to him we wanted to ask you guys about the friday night football um and what you guys thought about that um i know hall were you able to get your ticket i did um i'm going to try to make it because like i said i'm coming back from new orleans like that same day i mean i'm pretty sure my flight's in the morning so i should be back in time but i did i did get my ticket and as far as how i feel about it i think it, it's a great thing that they're having i think it's a great way to kind of bring the fans together for the first time since pretty much two years ago. Yeah. Uh, our first time to see like the, like I know that they did the new, uh, the new field, put down new uh, turf and stuff like that. Get a chance to see the new turf. I think they said they're going to bring out the new band and stuff like that. So I just expect a the great drum time. Line. Drum line, a drum line. That's what it is. I expect a good time, a great time, a fun time. And, like I said, just bring the fans together and everybody seeing each other for the first time in a very, very long time. Yeah, remember, guys, it's August 6th, 5.30 p.m. It's a Friday at FedEx Field. We're going to be able to see the team practice on the new surface, the playing surface, which has been a talking point amongst the fan base. Because, dude, I was telling Rio last night on his pod, it, it, dude, the field by October, November was embarrassing. You know, it looked horrible. I'm really excited right. to see what the new grass is going to look like. But yesterday I put on Twitter, like, how crazy would it be for, like, a laser show? And, like, I want to kind of put this in everyone's minds of, like, what I was, like, thinking of, right? So, you you have the field. The lights go dark. You know, you kind of maybe have blow some smoke in there, whatever have you. But you have lasers, like, pointing down onto the field that, like, outline players and colors, right? So, you would have the Washington player be a burgundy kind of outline. And then the opposing team, let's say it would be the Vikings, would be purple. And you would – those lasers would show the replay on the field of RG3's run against the Vikings, you know? And that's what my whole thought process was with it. I thought that would be really freaking cool uh, to see replays of, of uh, old plays that happen on that field. I think that would be really cool. I just wanted to yeah. put that in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would be amazing. That would, like I said, that, that would cost a lot of money, I'm sure. But yeah. and They already got the laser show going on. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm talking holograms cost a lot of money. It's not a hologram. Like It's like basically like you're using the laser for like an outline of a person. You're not an actual hologram. Okay, so it's saying? yeah, yeah. Okay, we make those lights for weddings. Like, right. well, like you, you basically you're having an outline, you're having a chain. The only thing is you're gonna have this one in motion, so it's gonna be difficult. But that's a fucking awesome. I'm sorry, that's an amazing idea. I really like that. <laughs> I think that would be a lot of fun. I really. We do. are allowed to cuss on this show. I don't know where that idea came from that I'm a dictator <laughs> stopping people from cussing. That has never happened. Never. I, 
I just asked him about Jeff Bezos's penis rocket. Yeah, so sure. th that's the kind of stuff that I really govern. Read on. <laughs> it's that stuff. You you can always see it on my face when it happens. Just like oh god, I, every time. I'm a I'm I'm a wild pit bull. You gotta just let me feast. Sometimes, He's off the leash. Man. He's yeah. off the leash. I'm I'm unchained and I'm Django out here. Yeah, but right I now. I do I do love the Friday night football aspect because of I I've always said that I always felt like they didn't have home field advantage with FedEx and if they could have like a oh, yeah. practice on that field to kind of get just players used to it because it always just feels like a foreign territory every time they went there and if you're kind of having these practices where it's nuanced it's normal it's not as big of a deal when you go back on that field and I, I do like that aspect of it so I'm glad I can't wait to get there I hope I'll see everyone else there as well we'll have a great time watch this team and uh with only 20,000 people there dude it's going to be a lot of fun yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, that's a perfect number of people, by the way. Too. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's a great idea. Um, I'm very happy that they're doing it. I highly doubt I'm going to be able to go. Um, of course, just because, you know, I mean, we're saving up. We're about to buy a house, all this stuff. So we're, yeah. we're, we can't be spending money on that type that's of That's understandable. Yet. It's understandable. But, you know, hey, I, I'm, I would be excited for it. I hope that it's going to be live cast by one of you guys so I can watch it. I'm not sure if it will. I hope so. But let's yeah. move on to... The freestyle of this week, and is to our big fan and super fan, Brandon Reinbold, Meast21. I asked him, the man, is the Super Bowl window open right in the Super Bowl door or window open for the Washington football team at this moment? Let's hear what he has to say. You all know what it is. It's the freestyle on the Burgundy Zone with your boy Meast. I'm back. Let's get it. Is the Super Bowl window open right now for Washington? No, but it's unlocked. I'll dive in. We opened training camp with the 16th best odds, tied with six other teams at 66-1 to win the Super Bowl. The window is not open, but it's unlocked by our defense, which proved last year it can carry us to the playoffs with the 29th worst offense. We filled major holes on the defensive side that can propel our defense into greatness. And on paper, we have one of the best defenses in the NFL. The window will remain unlocked while we have our defense aligned, which is one of the best in the NFL, if not the best in the NFL, intact and healthy, and they're all under rookie contract. We also upgraded the offense across the board. With that, we're an average quarterback away from the window of being wide open to being legit Super Bowl contenders. So it's up to our quarterback's play, whether that's Fitzpatrick, Heineke, Allen, or Montez, or somebody else, uh, to be able to open the window and climb through to the Super Bowl. And as they say, defense wins championships. Hail to the Redskins. All right. Thank you, Brandon. That was great. I loved that bit from him in saying that the Super Bowl window maybe is not current open, but it is unlocked. I think that's a great way to kind of put it where – but I will, I will disagree with Brandon just a little bit when he says that they are a mediocre quarterback away from that Super Bowl being open because I think they might have that guy in the building. What say you, Reed? Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think that uh, I, they do have a mediocre quarterback in the building, a guy who can get it done, but I, I definitely think that you're, they're very – they're close, man. Washington is a lot closer than a lot of people think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brandon. I can't thank you enough, sir. He's yes. a great fan. He joined our Discord chat. He's, he's inside the, the chat now. He's the man. And he laughs at all my jokes. Yeah, I he does. It. And he's very nice for doing that, by the way. He's very, yeah, I very know. nice guy. It's, 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 it's he's like too I nice. Pay him. It's too almost nice like I have to pay him. I should write him some checks every week. You should. <laughs> now let's move on to our fan questions. And our first one is from Scott Hartley. Oi! From the UK. Oi! He said, you win $1 million on the lotto. What's the first thing you're buying and why? He said he's buying a plane ticket to Mexico or Canada so he can sneak into the U.S. <laughs> uh, first thing I'm buying, I'm not going to go like the generic, like, oh, I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to buy a house. I would buy season tickets to all away games and hoe games for the next and three games. years. Oh, that's so really I'm just cool. a season ticket holder for the next three yeah. to five years. That's and I'm going to every home game and every away game on my private see, jet. See, Hall, this is where you got to think big, dude. This is why you say, look, I'll maybe buy 10 seasons worth, but you got to adjust the price with me, you know, because, like, for how many seasons right. I'm getting. There you go. See, you got to be smart. Right. Uh, what am I doing with that one mil, Scott? I hate to, like, make things lame here, but um, I'd probably be buying my mom a house uh, when I was a kid. I promised her we would go on runs and walks all the time, and there was this one house at point I – 
She always liked it. Always, I told her I'm going to buy you that house. So if I would win the lotto that one mil, that's what I would be doing. No. Yeah, I'm going to be lame here too if, if, if I win that one mil. I'm not going to buy a medium-sized penis rocket and shoot myself into space, but <laughs> I am going to end up just using that to support <laughs> – uh, my family for dude, i thought he was gonna log out after that i literally thought that was happening <laughs> well i mean does he still run the washington post he stepped down but he's like Dick, on the way yeah. of stepping down you know what i mean oh so he's not fully stepped down yet yeah well, the, then what's he doing in space get back to work <laughs> <laughs> all right now scott's next question for us and i'm gonna start this one off with you reed do you see the rates of the vaccinate, vaccinated players rising after the 90-man roster cuts and the 53-man roster cuts if they're, if they're filled? Right. So um, apparently from what I just read, there are no teams anymore that are below the 50% rate. It was us and the Chargers as of, I believe, six days ago. But like you were talking about, uh, Scott, we kind of talked about it on Twitter a little bit. If you're a player and you're a fringe player, you're you're going to need to get vaccinated because if – it's between you and you're non vaccinated and somebody who's vaccinated and it's close. They're going to be like, sorry, we got to go with the vaccinated guy, man. So you, you French players, you got to make sure that you are. So look, okay, look, I, you know, I love you guys. I love everyone out there. Okay. This is why Bill Belichick is the goat. Cause all these right. people that are dropping those unvaccinated players because they're fringe or on the bubble, Bill Belichick's the sitter say, okay, I'll take the talent. I'll take that right away. <laughs> Let give it to me. So please, Please cut your players for unvaccinated. Uh, that makes our job a lot easier to be able to pick up players. So please do. Um, that's just kind of how I feel about it, dude. Well, I was just talking about if you're like a fringe roster player. Like, I obviously, know. Montez Sweat, he's not going to get cut. We know that. No, no, I'm, and, I know. I'm talking about those okay. fringe. There's oh, okay, some okay. really good right. talents put yeah. out. Especially the... a wide receiver from right. this team. Yeah, you're right. Dax yeah. Milne, get on that boy, or else you're going to be <laughs> playing with the Jets, and you know it. Right. What do you think? I'm going to uh, you want me to go? Um, yeah, I mean, you're the only person left. So <laughs> I thought you were gonna move on to the next question. Uh, my bad. What was the question? My fucking dog threw up. I was just like looking at that shit. It, it was about <laughs> the vaccination rates. Fifty percent vaccination fine. rate. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, uh, I mean that's better than what it was before when it was first got reported that they were one of the lowest teams in the NFL with as far as vaccination rates. Uh, I know it got reported that like seventy five percent or seventy eight percent of the NFL players have gotten at least their first shot or something like that, or mm -hmm. all the way fully vaxxed. So I'm kind of expecting the number to kind of keep going up, maybe increase a yeah. little bit more. Well, especially when, when and especially who gets a second shot. After that just came out, the news came out. Like now it's exactly. going to skyrocket. Players are like, exactly. I don't want to be the reason. So uh, yeah, as far as being worried about it, I mean, there's always like a slight worry just because there's going to be a small percentage of the team that's probably not going to be vaccinated. But right. at the end of the day, I have, I mean, they went all through last year, even though it was still restrictions and stuff like that. They went all through. Look, I mean, Right. After Sam explained it, it, it made more sense because, like, what I was hearing from it was if you're under the 85% uh, threshold or whatever the threshold is for NFL, like, vaccination-wise, that if any unvaxxed player that, like, say, like, like get vaccinated, say they come up positive for COVID, if that person not vaccinated, then all of a sudden your team has to forfeit or, like, a couple of unvaccinated players come up. I just I, – I thought it when they were explaining it, it was just if you're over the 85%, we'll work with you. We're not going to try to, like, make you forfeit. If you're under the 85 percent, no matter who you are, like what player you are, vax or not, if if any people come up positive under 85 percent threshold, I just kind of I thought that was the way I explained. I thought it was you're gonna forfeit, but after Sam explained it, it makes more sense now. Right. So I didn't. I'm not really that worried about because I think it's gonna go up anyway. Yeah, I mean, me and Hall were talking in our group chat. <laughs> we were going back and forth about this. And I was saying last year they had zero vaccinations. They had right. zero positive cases on the 53-man roster. They were one of the best teams in the league with it. But um, And with ha having over 50% vaccinated right now, automatically that means their chances are better at not being able to have an outbreak happen. And that being said, players are still isolated by position groups. So right. if you do have some sort of an outbreak again with the unvaccinated, you'll be able to isolate those guys, get the other ones away to the point where you won't have to forfeit and then give up your paycheck. Right. Look, I just feel like this is a way, and I, I think um, Red, uh, Redskins rant said it perfectly. This is in the same thing I was thinking. This is just the way for the NFL to say pressure guys, but they aren't planning on actually doing anything. It's like right. when your parent told you, you know, get in the house or I'm going to kick your butt kind of thing. Right. Like, of course, right. yeah, all right, I'll come in the house. But you're not really going to kick my ass. Right. <laughs> well, unless it's my dad. Yeah. 
<laughs> but no, like uh, the comparison to last year, last year was a little bit different because the protocols that were in place, like everybody followed that so seriously. Right. And right now, since people are vaccinated, everybody's so relaxed and chilled. It's almost like COVID's not a thing anymore. So it's a little bit different. But the NFL did also put in place that if you're not vaccinated and you're on a, a you're on an away game, you can't you can barely even leave your hotel room. You can't yes, go out and to restaurants. You can't go. Out the you can entire, barely do stuff around the facility. Right? That's yeah. my entire point. Is that right. they proved to us last year that they can be smart, they can be responsible, go about their right. lives without ruining everyone else's. And right. that's why I feel like I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I know everyone wants to freak out about it. I don't understand what the whole hoopla is about because nothing is really going to happen. Right. Look, I understand the variants out there. I'm not saying COVID's not bad. I'm just saying this news mm -hmm. with the NFL doesn't mean much at all. Because this, right. is the, this is like the NFL owners saying that I'm going to spite myself based on what my players do and like that's what right. that's the conundrum here they don't want to do that right, right. plus if Dwayne Haskins can not get COVID from having a stripper's booty hole right up in his face <laughs> without no mask on I'm sure booty I'm hole. Yeah. that was great <laughs> now our next question is from our other UK guy Andy Burrows of the DC Oi. Tweet Team podcast oh he said it's fourth and one it's last minute of the game on the five yard line Hall's at wide receiver, reads at tight end. You can only give the ball to one. Who are you giving it to? Not sure if you know this, Andy, but Reed is a former state champion tight end and was a five-star recruit before he tore his ACL chasing yep. a guy who tried to kidnap a kid. He's a hero. Yes, I am. So I'm just kidding. Hero, okay. No, he's not. <laughs> I, uh, seriously, I would go with Hall just because Obviously. Hall, I played flag with Hall. Hall has great hands. One of the funniest things about Hall, if you ever play football with him, he's not <laughs> smiling the entire time until he has the ball in his hands. Every time he gets that ball in his hands, there's a smile on his face. Every picture is taken of him in a sporting event, Hall's smiling. Every single time. And, and Hall yeah, used to play receiver. Him. Hall's like a very good, talented yes. wide receiver. He, he's very, he knows the nuances Dude, of the position. I've seen, the only thing I will say is Hall will have been dominating that whole game, so I'm going to be wide open in the end zone, and you're going to miss me. You're not going <laughs> to hit me, and you're going to get booed out of the goddamn building. And the other thing about Hall is Hall like never had strings for his shorts, and so he'd be <laughs> running down the field trying to hold up his shorts with one hand and then trying to catch a football with the other. It was always funny. But I always mm -hmm. caught it. Always caught it. Now, our next question from Andy is... I love this one. You have to put together all of the podcasters on the O-line. Who are you putting and where? Can I just say real fast, um, this is... We're going to find out what podcasters Kyle thinks is fat. Right <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm on the O-line. I know. I am, baby. Uh, this, can, this can be for everybody. Uh, but at center, I guess I'm putting Keith. Um... Uh, that, Keith, yeah, Keith, Freddie, at left, <laughs> Freddie Ham at left guard. You're that Freddie. Big Doug at left tackle. Yeah, uh, I'm putting Reed at right tackle. Okay, I um, control that. And then give. I don't. I want to keep Tay for like tight end and wide receiver. So I'm not going to. What about Rio at right guard? I feel like Rio would be a dominant right guard. I I, I feel like Rio is more of like a linebacker safety type. Yeah, but you know I'm just I'm saying thinking? he's nasty. I'm thinking Brandon Sheriff nasty. Like yeah. he's gonna go. It can be Rio. <laughs> yes, yes. Is it going? Yeah. Perfect. That was great. Now, our next question is question. from Tony Shivers, our guy, big fan. Who would you want to play you in a movie, Hall, besides the uh, one dude from Scrubs? Yeah, my <laughs> man, Turkleton. Um, yeah, Turk. Donald Faison. Uh, of course, every black dude is going to say Denzel, but I'm not going to say yeah, Denzel. Right. I was going to say Denzel. <laughs> um, who would I want to play me? Michael B. Jordan's hot in the streets right now, so I'll go with him. I could kind of see that, too. You guys, I could see that with the eyes and stuff. You guys look similar. You're attractive <laughs> enough. Um, back in high school, I used to get Vince Vaughn all the time. People used to always say I, was, I looked like Vince Vaughn. I don't. Um, so probably, honestly, now, just based off of how I look, I'd probably say Channing Tatum or Brad Pitt. But realistically, it would probably be Zach Galifianakis or something. It would be Zach Galifianakis, <laughs> without a doubt. That's exactly who it would be. Funny. Yeah, without a sucks. doubt, that's who it would be. Uh, who would I have play me? I don't know, Vin Diesel? I don't know. <laughs> the, who, family. It is. This is family. No, yeah, Vanilla Ice or whoever it is who plays <laughs> the goddamn lead in V for Vendetta. I don't know. I don't know, yeah. I, I, man, whoever can wear that mask, whoever that actor was. He's masked, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that's such a good one. And, like, people thought that was such, like, a, a jab, and I was like, dude, that's funny. I do. Like <laughs> yeah. that. It's funny. Winners has been saying that for years. Yeah, he has. Uh, he, he was the one who told me to get a beard, by the way, and then everyone yelled at me for get, growing my beard back out, so then I had to shave it off. No, um, I like your beard. No. 
Uh, all right, now our next that. question from Tony is, this is a great question. He's looking ahead to week one going against the Chargers. They drafted Rashawn Slater in the first round. It's well known that Chase Young and Rashawn yeah. Slater's matchup from two years ago was a very intense and tough one. So Tony's question to us is, how do you think Rashawn Slater will stack up versus Chase Young in week one? Hey, so look, they have experience against each other. Rashawn Slater was known uh, when he, he basically he didn't. He basically shut Chase Young down. I mean, he didn't completely shut him down, but he did better than almost anybody else until the Clemson game did, uh, until the Clemson game. Um, but Chase Young just got done with his first year in the NFL. The NFL is a different animal. Chase Young knows what he had to work on. It's a completely different ball game now. Chase Young has a year of experience. Chase Young, it's going to be a battle because Rayshon Slater is a hell of a talented player, but uh, I think Chase Young is going to end up, it's not going to be like college. Chase Young is going to get the better of him. Yeah, I, I don't want to like limit it to Chase because you know him and Montez. They're gonna they'll, move they'll, around. Yeah, they'll so rotate. Much. They'll right. move around. Um, right. but I do think it will be a very very good matchup, and this is probably one that's big mentally for Chase. Uh, yeah. Specifically because it's well known what happened in college and everything and how it went. And Rashawn coming in as a rookie, this is kind of Chase is coming to of saying, look, if I'm really gonna progress from last year and where I was in college, this is the time to do it to really showcase because we knew what happened in their previous matchups. So it's a big measuring stick for Chase. I do think Chase will win those matchups. I do. I'm not going to say that he's going to get like three sacks on Rashawn right, Slater, but I think right. Rashawn Slater is going to hold his own. He's going to do very well. It's a reason yeah. why he's a top pick. He, he was, player. People were saying he should have been the first left tackle taken right. in this draft. Yeah. Um, it's, he's going to do well, <clears throat> but Chase is going to play it the right way mentally by putting himself in positions to make plays and with effort. That's just what he does. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just think also in college, Chase Young pretty much just relied on nothing but athletic Athlet ability a, that was and exactly just speed and right. not really, like, really fine-tuning all of his pass rush moves. He wasn't a technician. Exactly, exactly, all of his hand movements, stuff like that. So I definitely think that after year one, he kind of knows, like, what to expect from the right tackle, left tackle, how they're going to place their hands. He's already gone against Rashawn Slater, Rashawn Slater, so he kind of knows what he's all about. So I definitely think that Chase Young has a slight advantage, like you said, Rashawn Slater is a top talent, one of the probably the most talented tackle that came out of this draft. And so it's definitely going to be a big battle. And I expect Chase to slightly edge him out, not like the whole game, but like Kyle said, he'll win a couple of battles. Rashawn Slater will win a couple of battles. But right. at the end, I think it'll be a whole defensive group effort that'll propel Chase and this defense over and, the edge. And that's the thing. you We're looking at it from Washington's side, and it's like, will Chase, like, will he show up against this? I think you really got to got to be looking at it from Rayshon Slater side. I mean, you got two fantastic, two of the most athletic pass rushers in the NFL. You're going to be going against both of them in your and first Montez NFL game and ever. And Monta yeah, in your first NFL game, that's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure to protect that new franchise. That I know is big, there. strong ass coming at you. Yeah, Jonathan Allen's I, big, strong ass. Ron would Payne's not, it would not surprise me. Ass. It would not surprise me if Jack Del Rio calls a bunch of stunts and delayed yeah. blitzes oh, yeah, to that to right side him. on Rashawn Slater. Did it confuse him as much as possible? Get as much faces and chaos in his face it, so he can't adjust. Is is Rayshon starting at right or left tackle? Do we know? I'm about to look at their depth chart. I thought it was left tackle. My mistake. I mean, it should be because they don't have anybody better than them. Yeah. So it be. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, now, our next question is from the Colonel, and it's very, very short and sweet. So, Hall, I'll go to you for this one first. Aaron Rodgers, question mark. And he's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. By the way, yes, it's Rayshon Slater, left tackle, Brian Bulaga, right tackle. So, oh, go ahead. They got Bulaga. No crap. That's a good yeah. signing for them. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Aaron Rodgers, question mark? Because, you know, it just got re – um, what, it said he wasn't going to show up for right. training right. camp? Yeah, it, it's, yeah it's going to it's gonna end messy, apparently, a lot of people are saying. Um, Obviously, like I've been saying, I mean, we've kind of beaten this horse down a little bit when this was big news. But uh, Aaron Rodgers takes you over the top. Aaron Rodgers wins you a Super Bowl. So um, I, I would love to. Of course, it depends on the sense. price. It really depends on the price, but um, yeah, I mean, you got, of course, if you're going to go with Fitzpatrick this season and you have a chance you can get Aaron Rodgers, the reigning MVP, one of the greatest, most naturally talented quarterbacks this league has ever seen. Yeah. I think Aaron Rodgers, you put him on this team, this team, it goes over the top of there. All of a sudden they're right there with the bucks. if not better. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Dude, if we got, if we got right. Aaron Rodgers, we're better. We are favorites to win right. the in, the Super Bowl, not just the NFC, the right. NFC, the Super with Bowl. With this defense, these receivers, the I only, mean, you're going to have to give up some pieces. My only right. issue is is that I know I love the hell out of Travis, but I, I disagree with what would get done for Aaron because they wouldn't want Brandon because they're going to have to pay Brandon. 
They right. wouldn't want Jonathan Allen as well because they're going to have to pay Jonathan Allen. They might want Matt Ioannidis. Uh, he's coming off of an injury, so his kind of yeah. – It'd be Deron Payne. But he is a be Deron Payne. Yeah. And that's where I'm right. kind of getting at where I'm like, damn, dude, like this, it's going to get pricey. Hey. And so that's why it's most likely going to be somebody like Deron Payne of that magnitude and of like a bunch of picks more so than a bunch of players and picks. You know what I mean? Right. So in that being said, I would love Aaron Rodgers on this team. Absolutely would. Absolutely. But I feel like he's more interested in like going out and smoking toad venom or whatever it is. Him and his <laughs> Hey, who cares, man? Let him look that goddamn tight. toad. Dude, he, all... you know he wants to go back to Cali. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. So he's what was the question? Up. If we get Aaron Rodgers? Uh... Yeah, it was, it was just... it's simply Aaron Rodgers, question mark. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, look, if you put if you go by some of the national media's expectations of this team with a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick, who you can say what you want about Fitzpatrick. He's good. He's bad. He's pretty much average to between average and mediocre, if you want to call right. it that. Right. So if they're, uh, they're putting the expe- expectations of double digit wins, a, a division winner. I know Sam Ocho just joined ESPN. Maybe he's trying to like make a splash kind of. Boom, I'm here, motherfuckers. But he said <laughs> Washington football team is the biggest competitor to the Bucks getting back to the Super Bowl. Look, just like Sam said, Rich Eisen's a uh a uh what's it called a guy? Optimistic a, um, guy. Optimistic Very guy. Optimistic. Sam Macho's a, a optimistic guy. I'm not gonna go that far and say like they're gonna be competing with the Bucks or the Super Bowl. But I do think that with the a top tier quarterback, a top ten quarterback, or a, somebody playing at a top ten level would hundred percent put his team over the top. And who better at the quarterback position nowadays outside of Pat Mahomes, maybe Tom Brady, than Aaron Rodgers. So, right. And, bam. Uh, I mean, like, I think I said this last podcast, but it's interesting to think about if the Packers do get rid of Aaron Rodgers, depending on what they get in return, I mean, I doubt they would get any qu- quarterback that's worth starting. All of a sudden, they're not the favorite in that division. All of a sudden, oh, you like, no, no, no. If, it, if it's Jordan Love starting for the Packers and Justin Fields starting for the Bears, you like the Bears in that. Like, I mean, I, mean, I like them. I like the Packers. I like the Lions over the Packers if Jordan Love has to be the starter. Right. Well, well like, yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't know how Jordan Love is. Look, and this kind of goes into my point, um, kind of with the team building and everything. You take away Aaron, that entire team goes to crap, you know, and I know everyone likes to say you're not winning unless you have that quarterback. Devontae Adams and Jerry Alexander, those guys, they're all so good. Well, Devontae Adams is gone. He's in a contract year, that, so if yeah. Aaron's well, dipping this, out, you right, know he's dipping true. out too. Well, Derek yeah, Carr's but, been recruiting him since early yeah, this offseason. Yeah, yeah. But that's just my whole thing. It's like I, I'm just worried, really am worried about Aaron and where that's going because you're putting way too much into the quarterback position. And when Ron and Stephanie Rivera interviewed with Mike Silver and his daughter Natalie Silver on his podcast, he made a comment saying, I didn't want to go out there a quarterback – that would we would have to base the offense around like right. we like that that took away everything that we were doing what that quarterback needed and what I interpret that as was like a Deshaun Watson or an Aaron right. Rodgers where that's all that's the focus is on where in he would much rather get a guy in here who molds into this offense and can work with it and gel with it well, and that makes a lot of sense to me I think I think Rodgers would be a good fit in this offense with his mobility and quick release and stuff um by the way real fast did you hear the uh, that Eagles Somebody, a radio host for the Eagles or somebody, a reporter out in Philadelphia, said that when Deshaun Watson gets traded, there's a 90% chance that Philly's going to be the team that makes it. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. They have all the ammunition. I've said that from the get-go. They have all the ammunition. That would would worry me. I mean, I I don't like Philly. I think that they're the worst team in the division. But you had Deshaun Watson to that team. I mean, look, if you go into what they have, they have $40 million plus in cap space going into next year. They're probably going to have three first-round picks, depending on how Carson Wentz plays. And I think he'll – Pre, play pretty damn good in, in Indianapolis. They're going to have three first oh. round picks. They can yeah. easily offload two of those and yeah. another later round pick and maybe a player right. to get Watson. That's fine, and, dude. I hope they do man. that. Yeah. That's fine. I, 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 I hope Deshaun they do that. We're, the, Philly's going to turn into the Texans. That's I mean, fine. They're, like, right. They're I'm not, cool they're not, that. they're not going to scare me and like, oh man, they're going to win every, like, but yeah. like, it'll make them better for sure. I mean, I just don't want to play Deshaun he, Watson twice a year. That's all. Oh, about. totally. Right. That's but, what I'm saying. But the fact yeah. is that they're not going to have three first rounders to really put back into their team. That's still, that's still a, uh, Nine and seven. Oh, I can't. I guess we can't do that anymore. That's still a uh, nine and eight team right there with yeah. Deshaun Watson, if that. Right, and that's what I'm saying is like they would be castrating themselves future yeah. wise because they're not right. a good team right now. They're older. They're coming off the Super Bowl win. They're trying to rebuild. They just got a new piece in Devontae Smith. Smartest thing would probably do is to keep building 
your rest of your team and then go get your quarterback. But look, right. hey, I hope you guys go and do that. Please do. But that's you. also where the forty plus million dollars of cap space comes in. You can bring yeah. in the talent. Right. See, that's the thing is, the free agents. What, what was uh? What did the Collins say? What the the free agents that are bought for these types of uh, average deals? They only work out forty percent actually yeah, living up to yeah, their yeah. Uh, right. contract and everything. That's like free agents, like. With Washington before in years past, that was their problem, is that they were trying to build through free agency by spending a bunch of money, and nothing yeah. was in return. you got to build through the draft. That's, that's the way you do it. That's yeah, what that's uh, Monday's article is about, actually. Ah, my man. Sorry to blow that up. But yes. No, I don't care. No, that's a good thing. That's Just to remind thing. you guys, part two of Reed's 10-part series, chronological order of the terrible, terrible things that have happened over the years for the Washington football team fans and why they turned into the dumpster fire that they did. And that will be coming out Monday. I can't wait, dude. No, well, no. Part two Shoot. comes out. Yeah, part two comes out tomorrow. And uh, real fast, just so know. people know, I'm just I, I know no, here. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, people, I know people have been like, I don't want to read it. It's gonna make me too depressed about the past. Like I had my friend Remy say that, and I will let you guys know the first two aren't gonna make you depressed. They're just funny stories. Yeah, I was gonna say the first one was Washington. Funny. Yeah, it's not gonna make you depressed. I write it in a way that it's funny. And but then from then on, it's still funny. But the next story is like three, four, five, six, seven. They, the you realize how messed up we were. It's man. funny, but it's like shaking your head, funny. Like, oh my yeah. goodness, I can't believe right. it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Scott and Tony. Uh, thank you so much for your questions, you guys. You guys are yeah. really the best. We couldn't do it without you. And then thank you Both to Sam Fortier as well yeah. um, for coming by and stopping by and giving us those great bits about Sam Cosme. All right, everybody, we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Make sure you do not miss it and join our Discord app and join our chat. Come chat yeah. with the boys and VIP. Come chat with Burroughs and Scott and me and, and Meast, Brandon. Yeah. Come hang out with the boys. And also, do not forget to check out theburgundyzone.com where you can find all of our videos, episodes, where you can find all of our blogs supplied by George Carmi, Colin Dunphy, Mr. Reed here as well. All right, everybody, we'll see you guys next week. I'm Kyle. Oh. And apparently I am dead from the looks of my skin color right now. <laughs> that happened a long time ago. All right, everybody. See you Tuesday. Watching the football. Hey. I have a temp. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with T-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, 
or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're